in your role as a mother, most times you have four or five children. And they are not the same. They may come from the same stock, but they, are not, they all have different tricks, different attributes. There are some who are, what should I say, who are disgusting. There are some who are lovely, some who like to fight. And you, the mother, is always a mediator. That is why we say women are born mediators. When I go into a negotiation and I want an outcome, I'm negotiating for peace. Uh, men are negotiating for power. So for men, the thing is, the result, the deliverable is that have I gotten enough power? So it's about power sharing. For me, is have I created the necessary environment? Is it a place that is peaceful? Can a woman walk into the street without being violated? Can she go and get her business done without being messed up? Can she be able to do the work that will ensure that her child goes to school? Can she go and access um, ARVs if she is HIV positive? Those for me are the deliverables. Is she able to access water? If I can deliver that, I would have delivered on my mandate. Women are respected by their nature. So I expected that if women went there as a team of five or even ten, you would have listened to them. You know, it's not just men. There are also women who are also part of the fighting forces. So if you have more women coming in as negotiators and mediators, I think they'll be uh, given, you know, the respect and the, something can be done. It's pretty difficult to have a sustainable agreement if half the population, approximately half the population, are not participating. So the perspective of women, the input of women, is needed in order to make peace processes more sustainable. The more women come on board, I think the less conflict situations we'll have. We wanted to bring women together who'd been in this kind of rarefied political sphere and really start essentially unpacking and, and picking their brains in a very candid environment about how did they get there, why were they there, did they feel that they were representative of women, did they want to be representative of women, how did they get women's issues to the table if they did at all, how did they draw on the support of other women around them. Um, if they were women who were on the margins of a process, how did they get their issues from the margins to the center? And if they were an advisor to the process, how did being a woman change the way that they provided that advice? Um, and so then getting them to sit together, I think we realized as soon as they arrived, they've never all sat together. <laughs> I'm Andrew Marshall, I'm the Deputy Director, and I'm delighted to be here with you today for this, for this very important meeting. We see this meeting as part of a new and enhanced series of activities that we are planning in an effort to bring about an increased focus on the role of women in Track 1 peace processes. We expect this to lead to, ver to further specific dialogues, networking events, tools, and publications designed to raise the profile and promote practical strategies. What was interesting about this group, I think, was that a lot of them didn't have these connections. And so it was unique to bring them together and have them feed off one another about what worked and what didn't and how they got to the table and that. Thank you, ladies. No, thank you. What everyone said and began saying from the very beginning in this was they want a network. And that the power of networks and built like sort of drawing strength from one another, sharing information, finding ways that they could act as a reference group to support women in process X or process Y. And I, I think that that was, I think that already is, is really valuable and I hope that that's something that we're able to, to help continue